Hey guys, this episode, we're gonna take a look at this pull request and see how it works and why um, it adds a 2.13 times speed improvement to your Postgres queries that return multiple records. Um, so let's take a look at a little backstory on this first. There was a pull request in January 2024 that got merged that adds the row count to all of your SQL active record notifications with active support. This is really useful so you can get a notification of a SQL query that was run. You can say, hey, how many rows did that return? If we accidentally returned way too many rows, we could have it you know, raise an error, send us a message or notification or whatever. And this needs to implement with all of the active record um, adapters. And so MySQL has a way of doing that. It checks the result size, otherwise sets it to zero if it was nil. But for Postgres, um, it's using result.count. So it always has a count, assume it's zero if um, there isn't one. Then here it's using a result.length for uh, SQLite and so on. So the implementation of these is a bit different for every single database. And specifically, when Jonathan was um, upgrading a Rails application, he ran into a performance regression with um, that change. So the solution to it was basically replacing that count, um, result.count right here. Let's go to the Postgres one. Um, result.count and replacing that with a call to an n-tuples method. So let's talk about this first and then uh, talk about n-tuples. Result.count actually comes from enumerable because this is giving us an enumerable object, you know, like an active record relation back. And so it's got, you know, all of those records and it implements enumerable, which has count, but enumerable, the way it works, like we talked about in a previous episode recently, um, enumerable just requires you to implement the each method. And so for count, it goes through each item and just counts them up, plus one, plus one, plus one for every single time it yields. So this is what you have to implement minimally to use enumerable in your model or your class. And so that's what was happening here in this pull request. It's using enumerable to count those results, which is a bit slow because the uh, database actually gives you the data already. So let's take a look at his pull request and see just how complicated it was. It really just replaces count with n tuples. And it was using some other CMD tuples to get the affected rows already. Um, and so this is just a simple thing to overlook or you know just implement wrong or not efficiently because you're used to Ruby. We use count, you know? Um, and so this simple change here uses now a result from Postgres to just simply assign the integer number of rows or tuples, um, and that's it. So this makes a 2.13 times speed improvement on the benchmark he ran, uh, which is awesome. And this is gonna affect every single SQL query that you use with Postgres that returns a number of rows. And so that's gonna be incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, you know, and so this is benchmarking 100,000 queries that retrieve 10 rows, 18% um, faster in wall clock time, 44% less user CPU time. That's huge. Uh, so that is awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and, you know, this got me thinking, what is a tuple anyways with regards to Postgres? Um, so I was researching it, you know, what are tuples in Postgres? And it explained that it's a physical representation of a row within a table. And this is um, where we get to learn about more of the internals of Postgres than you may be used to. Active Record, you know, abstracts all this for us, but um, the internal implementation of Postgres uses these things called tuples. So when you query a table and you get rows back, there are actually many tuples in the database and the ones that are getting returned to you are the rows. Um, so what happens is internally in the database, if you delete something, it just marks that row or tuple as dead. And if you update a record, a row, um, it will take the tuple in the database and say, this is dead and insert a new version of it. And so that's much faster for the database to process many, 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 many requests and updates and deletes and so on than having to actually edit the rows or physically delete them from disk and like resize and stuff like that. And that's where things like vacuum comes into play because um, Postgres's internal 
you know, architecture is designed for speed and performance. Um, and so then it's just marking these old records as deleted or dead. And then you come back later and clean it up and reuse the disk space and things like that with a vacuum. So this is stuff that we don't even have to ever care, care about unless, you know, we're working on active record and we're deeply integrating with the database. But knowing this kind of stuff can make you, uh, you know, significantly better as a developer. And you can make, you know, pull requests like this one to Rails, which are a great speed improvement and literally one uh, word change in a pull request. Not even a whole line change, it's just simply one method call that was changed. Um, and so I was incredibly impressed with this, but it gives me some more knowledge now about Postgres, how it works internally, and so on. Um, and you can keep an eye out for these types of things where if you're using count, remember that probably is from enumerable, and if it is, then it's going to have to go through every single item in that enumerable object in order to get the count. So if you can get the count some other way, you might be able to get it faster, like you see here, um, where it was already pre-calculated for you. And a sign that this was the right answer all along was that they were already using CMD tuples to get the affected rows. So when you're doing an update maybe, you're going to update X number of rows, maybe just one, maybe 10, 100, 1,000, whatever. Um, you want to know the affected rows from that SQL query, but then what is returned back is the number of end tuples. Um, and so we were already using a tuples concept in Active Record. So this was kind of an obvious thing. Once you caught it, you're like, oh, you know what? That's it. We should be using the value that Postgres gives back to us for the count and just trusting that because that's what Postgres said it did. Uh, rather than us having to take those results and then recount them in Rubyland, Postgres already did the counting for us. Let's just use that value. Um, so a tiny little change, but a fantastic one, I thought. Um, so shout out to Jonathan for this. But, you know, it's a good example of reading these Rails pull requests and seeing what's going on can give you understandings deeper about Postgres and everything else. Uh, along the way and make you a better developer. So I wanted to record this and share this with you guys because I thought it was really useful um, and I thought you might find the same. Uh, if you see any other pull requests like this one that uh, you'd love me to dive into, send us a link in the comments uh, and I will check them out.